Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we got a little project for a friend of my neighbors. Uh, they uh, contacted me, wanted me to come by and look at their trailer. They've got one of those little uh, teardrop trailers. It's a fiberglass gel coat and it's obviously faded like they all do. Uh, and it's not one of those little tiny ones. It's kind of a, you know, on steroids one. It's a uh, it's pretty good size, single axle, but uh, it, the, it's been sitting out in the weather and uh, the, the gel coat's you know, pretty chalky and faded on it and the stickers are faded. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get that polished up. So if you've got an RV that's kind of faded and you're trying to restore it and you're looking for help on tips and tricks, this is the video for you. So let's jump over there and take a look at it and then I'll, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to use to uh, get this job done. So let's jump right to it. Okay, here it is. Uh, you can see I've already got the license plate removed. I'll be removing the spare tire so we can get around everything. We got our helper here today, Jake. Uh, I don't know how much help he's going to be, but uh, he'll stand guard while we get this thing cleaned up. So this uh, this green on here, the light green, it's uh, you can see it's you know it's pretty uh, pretty chalked up, but not horrible. I've seen a lot worse. You can see the stickers here; they're checked. And uh, that's just shrinkage. Uh, they don't use the best quality uh, vinyl when they make these stickers and uh, it just shrinks up and then checks like that, pulls itself apart. But uh, it's not a bad looking uh, trailer. It's, uh, you know, set out in the sun. It's had a lot of element exposure and this is what happens. And this is just because you don't, people don't think to wax and uh, take care of their RV like they would their car and uh, it really needs the same treatment your car would get. So you need to wax them and uh, you know, protect them, keep them clean. Otherwise, uh, they get chalked up and start looking like this. So uh, it's not horrible, so it should go fairly good. And uh, you can see right there where the sticker used to be. The owner got uh, front and, the stickers for the front and back, and those have been removed already. So you can tell just how, uh, you know, how the sun cooks around it. So, Hopefully the new stickers are exactly the same size and uh, they'll cover right over the top. We're going to polish that. Well, hopefully it'll polish all the way out so it doesn't really matter. But uh, if not, we're going to uh, locate this new stickers right on top of those. And we'll get those on too today. So it's pretty early in the morning. You want to do this when it's nice and cool outside. Very cool. Uh, do not do it in the sun. Uh, don't do it when the skin temperature on the panel is warm. All it does is dry out the polish and uh, it'll just cause you tons of problems. You don't want to do it. So just work in the morning when it's nice and cool. Do what you can, clean up, and then the next morning get up and do a little bit more. Don't try to push it off into the afternoon when the sun's beating down. It's going to bite you in the butt. So it, it's a pretty nice little trailer. Um, hopefully this comes out well, but uh, we're going to go and get after it. You see, uh, I got a friend's Corvette in the shop here. This uh, pewter color is the worst to blend and match. So don't ever get a car this color or don't paint a car this color. It's heck of hard to spray and hard to blend. So I got to get this trailer done so we can get that vet done and get it back to him. All right, let's jump over the bench and uh, talk about the stuff we're going to be using today. Okay, the polish we're using today is a 3M perfect uh, gel coat. We're using medium. Now this is a polish and a wax. So when you're done, it's waxed. Uh, it's kind of a one-step process, but uh, when you're done, I wouldn't uh, let it go too long. I would get a gel coat wax onto it, some sort of a marine RV wax, uh, just to give it that extra protection. Because remember, everything that sticks to the RV is going to be sticking to the wax, not to the gel coat or the paint, right? So that makes it that much easier to clean off. And as the elements attack it, it's attacking the wax, not the gel coat or the paint. And that's important with your cars, your RVs, your boats, everything, is uh, give it a sacrificial layer to attack, then you can clean all that off and then wax it again. And then, you know, it's like getting a fresh paint job every time. And that's the whole idea behind this. So this is, uh, this is specifically made for gel coat. And uh, it's, from what I've seen, I think it works pretty good. This will be my first time using it. So we're gonna give it a shot. 
but uh, you really have to use a machine to get this done. You could uh, use a, do a little touch up by hand with this stuff, but really you need a machine. And that comes down to what machine to use. Now I've seen a lot of those little uh, two-handed uh, kind of vibrating little things. Don't waste your time, don't waste your money on those. They're, they're not gonna do anything. Though they can put wax on, that's about it. But don't, they're not gonna polish really. They just, for your amount of time, even the electricity you're wasting, trying to do it with one of those, you need to pick up a regular type polisher. So, and I polish all the cars I paint with foam pads. But for gel coat and this material, you need a wool pad. So that's what I have on the polisher today. So I have an orbital polisher. Uh, you can get, I got this on Amazon. It was like $80. It's a great unit. You can go by Harbor Freight, pick up their little cheapo unit, uh, get a wool pad for it, and you're really ready to go. All you need is some old towels and uh, you know a lot of effort, and you can get this done. So to clean it today, we'll be using uh, my foam cannon. And if you guys, you guys have a pressure washer, uh, get one of these foam cannons. You can get it off Amazon. Just put foam cannon in there. Uh, actually, this thing's like 20 bucks. That's it. Uh, the, the, the juice that goes inside costs more than the part to spray it out. So uh, well, I'll shoot a little video of this in action too, just in case you haven't seen one in action. It's great for, especially for washing RVs and big, uh, big equipment because uh, you know, you could spray it all down. It just foams it all up like a big old uh, marshmallow. Then you can get, get after it with a scrub brush and then pressure wash it off and you're ready to go. So let's swing over, get this thing cleaned up, and then uh, we can start polishing on it. Okay guys, uh, you can see that foam cannon makes pretty quick work of it. Uh, you pressure wash it off real quick, just gives you as much bugs and road grime and everything else off you can. Then foam it up real good, let it soak a little bit, and then get after it with a brush, give it a good scrub, foam it again if it's really bad, and then uh, you know rinse it off really well and you're ready to go. So we're not going to worry about drying anything. I'm going to go around and dry the windows because I don't want them to water spot, but the rest of it we're going to be polishing, so I'm not worried about getting it dried. Uh, we're going to start over here on this side. I've got some good light so you guys can see what's going on. So all i got to do is get my apron, polish in the polisher and extension cord, and we're ready to go. So uh, let me get that put together. I'll move you around, and we'll start to polish on this thing. Okay, guys, I got you uh, zoomed in. We're going to be working this area a little bit over the stickers and onto the gel coat at the same time, kind of show you both. Now, uh, I got the polisher out and I dampen the wool pad. So just get your hand wet and just kind of massage it in there, keep doing it, then just turn it on and just spin it out. So you don't want to start off with a dry pad because all it does, as soon as you start polishing, it just pulls all the moisture right out of the polish and instantly dries it and it needs to be creamy and wet to do its job. So if it's drying out, you got to stop, clean off what you're doing, clean your wool pad if it's getting really loaded up and then spin it out and keep going. Uh, you're just gonna be wasting time, wasting polish, and just not doing a very good job. So you need to always keep everything clean. Now remember, when you're polishing on this, you're removing uh, bugs and dirt and you know oxidization and some gel coat. So that is ending up on your pad. So uh, it's gonna get loaded up. Just don't keep going. Get over to the garden hose, rinse it off real good, spin it out, and then move on. So, and you'll get an idea, you'll be able to look at your pad and see that, hey, you know, I can see all that stuff caked on there, so I need to clean it up. A lot of times you can uh, take an old screwdriver or something and rake it, just turn it on, and just kind of drag it across there, and it'll kind of fling it off. Uh, it does wear out the pads faster when you do it that way. So if you want it to, to last a long time, you know, rinse it out with some water and then, uh, you know, spin it out and then get back to, to it. So let's go ahead and get some compound on here. You want to work in a very small area, just a little tiny area. Um, that way you just kind of get that done and then you move on. Um, a lot of guys will put it on and then before you know it, they're up here. You know, that, that's just too much to try to cover at once. So figure about, you know, one square foot. 
That's all you want to work out at a time, and then you get it good, and then you can move down. Uh, it's just the best way to do it. That's the way I do cars. That's the way you really should polish because otherwise you get lost and then you start, you know, skipping spots and then uh, your polish is drying out because you're trying to push it too far. So uh, let's get some polish on here and get to it. Now I shook up the polish real good and at first the pad is uh, completely empty, no polish on it. So. We're going to kind of move it around here a little bit, and I'm going to be running a uh, slower speed. Now we're not running really fast. I got this on the lowest speed. You start going after it super fast, all you do is warm up the panel and dry out your polish. So your idea is to keep that polish nice and wet all the time. Tell. Wipe this off really good. Do not let the polish dry on the panel. You want to get back after it right away. It's not like old turtle wax where you put it on, let it dry to a haze, and then rub it off. You need to wipe this stuff off immediately. If you let it dry, it's going to turn into a kind of really hard, very hard. You're going to have to polish it back off. So that's pretty shiny. I know you guys can't tell. But uh, let me bring you in really close and we'll take a look at an angle. Then we're going to move down and go over the top of these stickers at the same time. A lot of RVs have stickers on them. So we're just going to polish right over the top of them, try to clean these, uh, these things up the best we can. Okay, I got you at a little bit of an angle here. You can see right, right where we stopped. And uh, I don't know, can you see my reflection? There's my face right there. So just that few moments of polishing really did uh, wonders for this thing. Luckily, this gel coat isn't really in terrible condition. They actually have a heavy, this is the medium we're using, but they actually have a heavy, so if your uh, RV or boat is really oxidized and really chalked up, um, you use the heavy, and then go to the uh, medium. Don't uh, just think the heavy's gonna do the job. You need to you know, kind of get all the big stuff off with the heavy polish, and then go to the medium, and then you get a nice, super uh, smooth shine like this. So let's move down and get those stickers uh, and see how those are gonna turn out. Spread it around a little bit. You can see there's some green on here. Now, um, if you have a really dark color and a light colored sticker, you need to be careful so you don't transfer any of that uh, color down onto a lighter colored uh, sticker. So you may want to do the light stuff first and then move on to the darker stuff. Um, I've seen it happen. It's not that you can't polish it back off, but you know there's no reason to make more work or stain a sticker. You know if you can help it. So. Overlap where we stopped on the green. And I'm holding down, I got a fair amount of pressure on this. And I'm going to bump right up against that edge and try to get down inside that groove there. You hear the polish is slowing down? I can feel it grabbing, and I'll show you here in a second why it's grabbing. Close to the end, then I'm going to lighten up my pressure and let the speed of the polisher come up. And that helps remove some of that polish up there. Okay, just like that. Now it's starting to grab. I hope you guys can get, let me get in close. See all this right here? That's polish and also chalked up gel coat on there and some of that plastic from that sticker. So we can keep polishing like this, but what will happen is it's going to get harder and harder to polish. So we're going to have to clean this off. So, and that's what I was talking about earlier. So just be aware of that. Let me grab a towel and get this wipe before it starts drying. And this is where, you know, like I was just talking about uh, working in small areas. You do just small areas at a time and you can stay on top of it. So you're not uh, worrying about the polish drying or, uh, you know, you're getting so far out ahead of yourself that you're not doing a very good job. So you want to stay in tight, 
do a 12 by 12 area, you know, roughly. And that right there is looking really good. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this sticker is already starting to shine up already. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more and then I'll bring it back and then we'll take a little bit of a look around some of these other hard to reach areas and uh, see if we can't get those cleaned up as well. Okay, so we've got uh, basically from here all the way up and around. I pulled this light out a little bit so I could get behind it. So we've done basically here around this window and I need to clean the pad. So take a look at that. So it's really starting to drag. The motor on the polisher is getting really hot and I'm really fighting it. It's trying to pull me around. That's when you guys need to know that it's time to clean the pad. I mean, this thing is really loaded up. So uh, instead of raking it, I'm going to go ahead and just pull it off real quick, take it over the garden hose uh, or maybe the pressure washer, clean it off, spin it out really good and get back after it. It just speeds up all the work. If you keep fighting this thing, it's, you're just going to you know, kill yourself and it's not gonna do a very good job because all you're doing is smearing all the stuff you polished off right back onto where you're trying to clean again. So, and look at the towel. The towel is uh, got all kinds of stuff on it already. So rotate your towels when they start getting dirty, clean your pads often, and uh, it'll go a lot faster. So it's looking really good. Um, I'm looking at an angle and I see a little spot right here I don't like. It's not as shiny as the rest. And that's what you need to do. Don't move off to somewhere else thinking, oh, I'm done. Then you got to circle back when you see a spot. Check it carefully. Make sure it's all good to go. Then move on to where, you know, the next one. So uh, I'm using a short ladder here. I'll probably get my big ladder out. And when you're polishing on these things, you know, you don't want to be doing this overhead. You want to keep it, you know, no higher than shoulder height so you can and keep it close to your body. So you're doing a 12 by 12 square. There's no reason to be trying to do this out here. You're just going to screw up your shoulders, fall off the ladder, or you're not going to be able to do a good job because you're out of balance. So just stay right in front of you, polish that little area, wipe it down good, make sure it's good to go, and then just keep moving down before you know it you'll be done with that side of the trailer. So I'm going to go clean this up and we'll get right back at it. I'll bring you back when we've got to maybe this whole side done. We'll take a look at it. Okay, halfway done. I did uh, the left side and the rear of the trailer. You can see it's pretty shiny now. A lot more shiny than it was. The sun is not out at all. Actually, this is a perfect day. It's uh, threatening rain, but it hasn't. So it's not, uh, it's not hot. It's fairly uh, moist air out, so it uh, makes it perfect for polishing. So uh, this side was the hard side to do, and uh, I went around all these parts because there's all the utilities and everything. So this side uh, took a lot longer. I uh, went ahead and polished the anodized uh, aluminum around the window frames and everything else with the same polish, and that cleaned it up pretty nice. Now, all these plastic doors and everything, uh, I use a stuff called uh, Back to Black. Um, it works pretty good to bring those back to life, but uh, you have to keep applying it. It, uh, it just kind of, you know, it brings it back, but it starts to, uh, you know, lighten up again, you know, within three or four months. So, but it's easy to apply and, uh, you know, it's not very expensive. So this uh, side came out pretty good. I even got the fender there. Uh, the back came out really nice, hard to reach up there, but uh, you know, I, made it, I made it happen. Not, uh, not kind of reaching way out there to polish up there, but uh, it looks pretty good. I went ahead and put the sticker on, the new sticker as well. Since uh, this, this polish has wax built into it, I had to use an ammonia-based cleaner to clean up there before I put the sticker down, after I polished. So, and then once I got the sticker down, I went ahead and took some polish and ran over the whole area again. So that built-in wax is on there and just wiped it down good. So it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm into this thing four hours right now. So, uh, you know, it takes time to even a small trailer like this. So the, uh, the front and the other side is a lot easier because obviously there's not as many uh, openings and things to work around and everything else. So uh, hopefully it'll uh, go a lot faster, but I think it looks great so far. Uh, I'll bring you back, uh, maybe I'll bring you back and I'll show you how to put that sticker on just in case you guys uh, ever need to put a sticker on. All right, let's finish this thing off. Get this sticker on here. So I cleaned, like I mentioned earlier, I cleaned with a uh, cleaner that has some ammonia in it. Ammonia strips wax, so it'll pull the wax off because obviously you don't want to put stickers over wax. But we do want to um, wax right over our stickers when we're done, though. It helps protect them, especially uh, stickers like this. These are just printed onto vinyl, so they'll fade fairly quickly. 
So I'm just gonna line it up where the other one was. It looks like it covers very well. The surface has been cleaned, uh, the backside of the sticker. So the release paper is still on. So we're just gonna line it up and we'll do a half at a time. It's fairly easy. I, uh, I've done uh, tons of stickers. So this is really the easiest way to do it. You don't need to use water. You don't have to uh, do any kind of crazy thing. Now I'm gonna put a couple pieces of tape on this side here and that's just gonna keep it from rocking and shifting, okay? So all you need is a pair of scissors and some sort of squeegee. So I have actually a squeegee from 3M to put stickers on. You could use old credit card, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do, we're all lined up. It's looked like it's gonna land right where the old one was, so we're good. So we're gonna fold this back right here and then we're just gonna peel the, um, the backing off little by little. If I can get that started, there we go. So we're gonna pull these back and you gotta make sure that they don't um, fall back on themselves and stick to themselves. You're kinda of screwed if that happens. When I put the other sticker on, the wind started blowing as soon as I peeled it off there, which is you know par for the course, right? But luckily it was blowing in the correct direction, so it actually helped me a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna peel this back. Not too much, about like that. And then we're gonna take the scissors and we're gonna cut a nice straight line across here. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly perpendicular, but it needs to be straight, as straight as possible. We just let that fall. We get our squeegee. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this up here and we're gonna start squeegeeing. There's a little bow in this right here, so we're gonna start in the center. We're gonna start inching our way over, sticking that sticker down. And don't lift the squeegee, always keep it down on there and just back up and then inch forward. That keeps you from trapping bubbles in there. So now we're just gonna keep on going. Cross like this, we're not gonna get uh, crazy and try to do one side more than the other, because uh, like on a warm day, uh, it'll actually stretch the sticker and then it won't uh, line up where you want it to go because it gets bigger. It's just vinyl. They stretch fairly easily. I'm gonna lay that down right there. I'm gonna hold this big long one back out of the way while I stick this one down. And we're just gonna kind of inch this along. And that lined up pretty good over there. So. Now we're just gonna push down really hard. This, uh, there's transfer tape on here. That's that uh, um, kind of uh, masking paper looking stuff. And transfer tape holds stickers together. Let's say if there's holes or letters in here, it holds it all together till you get stuck down to the uh, substrate. In this case, it doesn't really need it, but it protects the sticker and uh, keeps me from scratching it with the uh, with the squeegee. Okay, so now we've got, uh, basically it's stuck up to here. So now we're gonna pull it back and go the rest of the way. Now, if you try to go, you know, halfway, it's great, but sometimes it doesn't work out so well if you go halfway because you have so much you're trying to handle at once. So what you wanna do is just go, you know, about a third or so. We don't need this tape anymore. So we're gonna peel this back over like this, and now you can see it's stuck to right here, okay? And that's why we want a nice straight line. So when we fold that back, that kind of pops out from underneath there. And then we can just peel this back a little bit. Now we don't want to peel it all the way off. Peel it back about, uh, you know, six inches like that. And then we're going to get the squeegee in our other hand. And I'm going to hold this right here. We're going to lay it over, but just a little bit. And we're going to let the squeegee take it out of our hand and push that down. Just like this. Goes on pretty nice, no bubbles. And then see how we get close. Then I'm just gonna peel that back a little bit more. I'll take the scissors and I'll cut some more of it off to get it out of my way. About like that. Chop 
chuck that down, peel it back, and then I can pinch it with my hand right here. And we'll lay this over. You don't want to try to lay it down because you'll trap bubbles. You want to let the squeegee push it down. So you hold it up and let it take it out of your hand. Just like that. Okay, Ugh, I'm gonna get around the propane tank here. So now we're gonna get a little bit more right up to the edge of these uh, little, I don't know, fingers or whatever they are. Okay, now I'm gonna peel this off the rest of the way. You have to worry about the short one so much, it's the long one that could flip over on you. So you gotta watch it really carefully. So now we're gonna push that down. I don't want that one to stick yet either, so I'll grab it with my other hand. We'll stick that down just like that. Now, that's the tricky part. I don't have enough hands. There we go. All right. And we're just going to let that right go down right where it belongs, right there. Just like that. And then we just Squeeze it down real good. Make sure there's no bubbles. I don't hear any in underneath there. You'll hear them pop and crackle when you're squeegeeing like this. And go all the way over the edge so that edge is pushed down. That's the most important part. Just like that. Now all we have to do is take the transfer tape off. And we've got ourselves a sticker. So where I used to work, we did tons of this. A little sticker like this is nothing to do by myself. There you go, beautiful. Freshly polished trailer, brand new sticker on the front and back. Okay, all done, let's do a walk around. Definite improvement. The sun just came out right now, so it was perfect timing. This was a perfect day to polish. Cool, uh, threatening rain most of the day. Really low wind, so it was pretty nice. Should have been uh, normal in this, uh, this area. It's 100 degrees, over 100 degrees during the day, so really lucked out on this one. Otherwise, it would have probably taken me two days to do this. I'd have to do half uh, one day and half the other day when it was nice and cool. So there's that brand new sticker we just put on. Now you guys can see, I don't know how well it's showing up, but it is shiny. You can see the uh, reflection down there. Looks a lot better, that's for sure. And it's going to help repel uh, water and bugs and dirt and everything else now since that uh, polish has wax in it too. So all I have left to do is uh, put the license plate back on and get it out of here. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on getting that uh, gel coat on that trailer all polished out using the 3M Medium uh, Perfect Gel Coat Polish and Wax. Uh, it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, they do make a heavy, so if, you're, uh, if your gel coat is really oxidized, do the heavy first, then switch over to the medium, and then uh, get a good coat of wax on it. I really think this, uh, the wax in here is you know, just to make it a little bit shinier, but uh, you really probably should wax it when you're done. That way uh, it lasts so much longer, you're not, try you're not doing it again in eight, nine months. So uh, just stick to small areas and inch your way around the motorhome or the trailer, whatever you got. And uh, before you know it, it'll look brand new again. Thanks for joining me here at Foot Hill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell icon and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.